Hello and thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. In this video, we will continue to discuss the different processes and transactions within accounts payable. We have already discussed what is a vendor account and what are the different parameters within a vendor master. We've also seen what are vendor down payments. We will now look into a payment block. A payment block is nothing but an indicator which blocks the documents of a vendor. Specifically, there are invoices which need to be blocked. This is used mainly if the payment does not need to be made to the vendor. And this can be for any reason. Firstly, it can be that the vendor is not yet due to be paid and thus a vendor is blocked. Secondly, we can assume that the invoice is not yet verified. So there can be various reasons why a payment is blocked to a vendor and hence a payment block is used within the vendor master and also within the vendor invoice. Next is invoice release. When the invoice value exceeds a tolerance limit from the value of the purchase order, there is a warning message which is set up and the invoice can still be posted. But in that case, a payment block is applied. This is to avoid any confusion or any duplication so that the accounts payable analyst can go back and check why was there a difference between the invoice value and the value in the purchase order. This message can be changed and the tolerance limit can also be changed. We will come at the tolerance limit topic in the next slides. However, when the invoice value will exceed the tolerance limit, this message will not be a warning anymore. This will become an error and thus there will never be a payment block in that case. You will not be able to save the invoice if the value exceeds the tolerance limit. And therefore, there is no requirement for an invoice release process in that case. So an invoice release process is only used when a payment block is applied to an invoice. Tolerance limits are set up to prevent any overpayment by the company. So if the company does not want to make any extra payments to the vendor, but they do want to have a threshold of, let's say, 1%, or in some cases they can have absolute figures, let's say, $5, then they can set up a tolerance limit of that amount. When the tolerances are either exceeded or at the upper or the lower limit, a message is set up as an error and thus it will not allow for the invoice to be posted. Below is an example of different kind of tolerance keys and the description of those keys. And on the right side, you will notice that an absolute as well as a percentage limit is set for every key. Next topic is parking. Parking a document is something which is important when an analyst are trying to post an invoice but is unsure of some details. Alternatively, it may also be a case that the analyst does not have the right to approve any invoice and thus cannot post it and is only allowed to park the invoice. So parking mainly only saves a document in the system. It does not update any GL accounts until it is finally posted. As I mentioned, the document may be for review or for approval by a senior accountant in the company, which is why it is first parked. The system assigned number is already assigned to the parked document, which is also carried forward when it is posted. And if required, there can be a list of parked documents available for a senior accountant 
if they want to approve multiple documents. So parking is more like storing a document or saving a document in the system and it does not actually post the document. It is very useful when the information for the document required is incomplete. Let's say we are awaiting some information from the vendor which is not yet received. So we can park the document and wait for those instructions from the vendor. You can use a document parking for incomplete documents. When the documents are parked, the data, the transaction data, etc. are not updated in SAP in any of the tables. And later on, once either these documents are approved or if they are incomplete, you've received the information, then you can finally post these parked documents either individually or you can use a list selection, which means you can approve or post them in a mass way. If you post several parked documents using a list, the system issues a list of document numbers. These are the final posted document numbers. The data is parked in the documents and this is finally deleted when they are eventually posted. A document is written to the document database and the appropriate data is updated in the system. Now let's look into how do we resolve these parked and blocked invoices. Let's assume a case when a document is parked due to inadequate quantity of goods or service received or a complete absence of goods and service received. So if the invoice is not for certain company goods, it will be returned to the vendor and deleted in SAP using the delete invoice document screen. If the goods received has not been made and the invoice is valid, the project accountant or the department representative will ask the contract sponsor to facilitate the goods received. Let's say if the parking is due to uncertainty with withholding taxes. In that case, the invoice processor will contact the purchasing organization and the finance head to resolve the issues. Or let's assume that there are blocked invoices due to price differences. In that case, if the vendor is in error, the invoice processor will issue a note to the vendor to send a credit note. Or the invoice can then be released automatically if the subsequent credit is already entered in the system. If the price of the invoice is correct, the invoice can be manually released for payment as well. In this case, the purchase order needs to be revised manually to reflect the correct price. Now let's discuss outgoing payments. Outgoing payments is a vast topic in SAP. Outgoing payments can be mainly divided in two different parts. One is manual payment wherein you make a manual journal entry and a manual journal voucher for the vendor. And the other is a payment automatic payment program, wherein once you've set up certain parameters in your vendor master, you can do an automatic payment run, which will be done automatically as per the batch which you decide. You can make these automatic payments either daily, weekly, monthly, etc. So when the invoices are already posted, these are open items which we already saw in the earlier videos while seeing the vendor list display. These list of open items which are due and which are not marked for payment they convert into a payment proposal where you get the option of selecting or deselecting any specific documents which you need to pay. And finally, a payment advice and a payment voucher is created. This is a summarized payment process and we will look into detail in the next slides. 
Once a manual invoicing is done in the system, so that means the vendor invoice is already created, we will have to start the outgoing payments process wherein we select the open items and we enter either a partial or a full payment amount and this is specific to manual payments where you can enter a partial amount if there is a need you can also update the exchange differences or you can update the exchange rate in the system so the actual rate is picked up by the system and then you can update the process payments and finally, these payments are posted in general ledger. Let's discuss how this looks like in a practical scenario in the next video. Thank you very much for watching Edupedia World Videos.